Hello YouTube, my name is Bowtied Media, and today I have a new video, although it's not really new, it's something I did a while ago when I had like no subscribers, so we'll see if you guys like this, but this is This Week in EDM. I'm going to go back and listen to and or talk about all of the songs that happened This Week in EDM, and obviously I'm not going to cover everything, so if there are artists who want me to follow so that they will be in another installment of this, put them in the comment section below and I will try to follow them on Spotify and see if stuff comes out. But the way this is going to work, I have four categories for songs that I'm going to go from the bottom to the top. So this also works as a ranking in terms of uh, what songs I like the least from the week to the f the songs I like the most. So the first song is a song that I've chosen that I think is the least my least favorite from the week. And then it goes the very last song in the video will be the my favorite of the week. So the four categories are one, don't bother. Songs that I think that no matter what, you're just not going to like it. So just don't bother. Two is neutral, songs that I'm just kind of meh on, but I think that you might enjoy depending on the genre. Uh, three is the good listens song that I think is a good listen regardless of the, your opinion on genre. And four is standout, songs that are my absolute favorites, songs that I really, really enjoy, and those do not come very often. Spoiler, there's none this week. So, we're going to start this off uh, with Complicated by Steve Aoki and Vis V featuring Ryan Caravillo. Uh, this song is actually a uh, cover for Avril Lavigne's Complicated, and honestly, just go listen to that song instead. I don't think this thing is anything special. Uh, it's a kind of boring house mix that stays linear throughout the entire runtime, and I mean, I don't want to discredit Avril Lavigne in terms of her vocal performances, but Ryan doesn't do a very good job. I think the original is just miles better. Just go listen to the original. I don't like the song. Uh, number two, up next is Loud by Sullivan King featuring Jason Alon. Um, so this is a screamer. This is a screamer of a track. I don't generally enjoy screaming on my tracks. And when it's paired with a production style and mixing that I don't like or I don't think is good, it's just going to be a no-no for me for the most part. And so if you don't like screaming at all, I would stay away from this track. I don't think it's that good. I mean, like, it, for Sullivan King, I think it's a step below what he would normally do or maybe two. And so, I mean, yeah. It, the song try kind of tries to redeem itself in the back end with a kind of uh, rock-esque backtrack um, and just approach, but I mean, it's just squandered by the drop, like, maybe 10 seconds later. So, yeah. Up next is uh, Never Going Home by Kungs, and Kungs is a pretty popular, uh, I mean, popular EDM producer. But uh, this track sounds like a dumbed-down, low-effort MGMT track, if that makes sense. Go listen to it and tell me if you think this sounds a lot like it's been or inspired by MGMT. Uh, not much happens throughout the runtime, and it stays fairly linear in its ups and downs. So, yeah, that's just it. And up next, and our final one in the Don't Bother category for this week is Crying Over You by Lucian and Roly Poso. I think that's how you say that. I'm, I'm going to mess up a lot of the pronunciations here, so just roll with me. Uh, I think this is probably as basic of a Deep House track as you can possibly get. I love Deep House, but in terms of the effort put into this track, it's just meh. I just wouldn't bother with it. It's um, just about two minutes long, and so I mean, like, there's... It really just feels like a... Uh, almost like a song that you would use to be like, this is what Deep House sounds like. And then you'd put this out and be like, here, listen to this two minute version of what it sounds like. Almost like a, a stock song to some extent. But yeah, not a fan. So moving into the neutral category now. So songs that are maybe not for me, but maybe for you, depending on the genre or what the sound of it is. <laughs> we have Butterfly by Nanobi. And um, oh my gosh, this track. Uh, <laughs> so Nanobi is doing this thing where he's doing these songs that sound like his childhood, this kind of Euro power, really happy, preppy, like you're just hardcore, happy, hardcore stuff. Um, I, I really don't like this stuff. Like I personally really don't. It sounds super cheesy and outdated because it is like, that's kind of what he's been trying to do with these songs. Uh, so this is, I think the fourth one that he's done of them. And uh, I, I really don't like it. So if you're like, I also am from Canada, so I don't even, I don't even know the Euro dance scene. It's not even my like thing at all. I don't have, yeah, I just, it's not for me at all. Um, but in the end, like, did he succeed with making a track that sounded like old Euro dance, but it's just outdated and I don't know. You be the judge of it. That's why it's neutral. Uh, that's the bottom of our neutral tracks. Um, up next, uh, Follow the Wind by uh, Horoprox. 
and uh, Horaprox. I'm not sure exactly how to say that, but um, he really missed hard with the last track, um, Brighter Side. That one was just no, no. Uh, and this is definitely an improvement, uh, but that's not to say that it is a fantastic song. It's a very so-so track with nothing really happening throughout. Uh, I can't say the uniqueness of this track uh, is really anything special. There really is no new uniqueness to this track, so I wouldn't listen to it over anything else on a regular day. Up next is Titans, the Iman Beck remix, which is originally by Major Lazer, which is featuring Sia and Labyrinth. There's a lot of things that may happen with that, especially when remixes with lots of people. Uh, this track is really nothing special. It has a bunch of big names on it, so there's this disposition that you would want to enjoy it or think it's really good because you have those things, oh, Sia, Major Lazer, you got like, ah, these big names, but it's just like, yeah, it's meh. Uh, C is definitely a highlight on this remix, uh, but I don't think Imanbeck uh, really brought new life to the original track. Up next is the Heartbreak Anthem with Galantis, David Guetta, and Little Mix. Um, with some of the big names that you would kind of, uh, or with the big names here, Galantis, David Guetta, Little Mix, you can kind of expect what you're going to get with this track. It's going to be a fairly basic commercial or progressive house track. It's really nothing more than that. Um, the song is a little meta in a sense that it says it's not a heartbreak anthem. It's a, it's like a anti-heartbreak anthem anthem. It's a really weird narrative to the track, but I mean, yeah. Uh, little Mix's vocals are fine here, but the production is just meh. It's more bland than anything. Uh, and honestly, sadly, it's to be expected with Galantis and David Guetta. I really liked Galantis's last little bit of stuff that they did with Church, but, um... Yeah, this is just uh, just a summer radio music. It's it's pretty much nothing more than that. Up next, uh, What Are You Waiting For by Wave Racer. Uh, the seemingly second single from an upcoming project. It's just the way it's organized on Spotify. Uh, this song is a uh, it's pretty glitchy and bright. It's an instrumental track uh, that does leave a little more to be desired with its runtime, uh, but has an engaging back half, albeit, again, it's really short because of the almost two and a half minute, I think, runtime. So it's a quick little instrumental track that uh, if you like Wave Racer, I think you will enjoy this a lot. Up next, uh, When I Come Home by Tasca Black and Violet Skies. Uh, this is probably Tasca Black's poppiest track to date, and I believe that's in large part in, wow, large part to Violet Skies. I think because of her kind of production, it doesn't say that it's featuring her. It says it's the two of them, and so I would assume she has a played a lot of production elements into this track. It's not just Task of Black, and so that's why I think it's a little more poppy. The track had a lighthearted, cheery vibe, but felt a little repetitive by the end of it, and for me, this would be nothing more than a playlist filler track. Up next is Valhalla by Sushi, and in the grand scheme of slushy tracks, or slushy tracks in the last uh, little year or so, it's not bad. I really haven't loved what he's been doing in the past. Uh, it's got a fun melody with a bit of a pirate theme going on here, uh, and it's not a track that I see myself coming back to uh, in the future, though. So it's just kind of, it's there. I think it'll do well for mixes and stuff, but uh, it's better. So she's coming in the up and up, but for now, it's just uh, it's just there. Up next, we've got Bad Blood by Dub Vision and Deep Vice, and this is a pretty cookie-cutter future bass track. Uh, if you like future bass and that's your style, uh, you will like this. I mean, I do a lot, but I need to look at this a little more critically than just being a good future bass track or future house track, sorry. And um, yeah, it's just kind of there. It doesn't feel uh, inc incredible or creative or anything new. It's just kind of, it's, it's good. Up next, Echo by Harmon Malik, Eric Nam, and Kashmir. And uh, I mean, that's quite the trio to say right there. I thought this track was going to be good, uh, or I thought this track was good, um, and I'd say pretty good at best. It's not really for me in that sense. Uh, it has this kind of middle ground sound between future bass and trap, where it doesn't go one way or another, and is really meant for commercial success or radio-friendly music. Uh, this ultimately isn't my jam, uh, though I would rather listen to something that is a little more unique than this track. I, yeah, I still need to know, I still need to figure out my feelings on Cashmere's last album, but, uh, for now the song will be here in the neutral category. Up next, PTLD by Vanek featuring Lolo. I don't think there's any accent there to those O's, um, but this felt like a pretty basic Vanek track to me. Uh, if this song came out a couple years ago, I think I would have approached it a little more differently or had different thoughts or opinions on it. But uh, in the grand scheme of things, this production style for me has become a little stale. 
Uh, it's interesting, though, because artists like Grant, where he's done the same kind of thing for a while, and he switched up recently, uh, but I love it because it's that style I love, and so for people that really, really love Vanek, you're going to love this track, but for me, it's just kind of meh. Up next, Everybody Feels by Arm & Hammer and Mazale, uh, featuring Zach Gray. Uh, for a collaboration between these two, I really didn't hear the Mazale influences at all, honestly, uh, as much as I would have liked to, and I just think it... Ah, yeah, it just wasn't there. I didn't really want to hear... I wanted to hear more Mazale in this track, but it really just felt like an Arm & Hammer melodic dubstep track to me. I thought this could have been a great melodic future bass track between the two, and it could have been this great harmony of musical instrumentation put together, but mm, it was just kind of meh. So that's why it's here. Still not bad, but I think it just could have been so much better. We are now moving into the good listens category, songs that I think are pretty good. And for retrospect, for me, there are songs that are seven uh, to eight. So I would score a seven or eight. And uh, actually, there's a lot of them, which is great. Uh, so up first, we've got Punching Bag by Brandon Burnett. And uh, Brandon Burnett resides in this uh, indie subculture of EDM where he actually does this kind of like almost basic pop um, but not quite. It's kind of like an indie dance style, um, and I've always actually liked it. His vocals are crisp and clean, and this time it's supported by a trap beat and some bouncy strings. It's a neat song that I enjoyed. Up next, Trip Sitter by Lemater, which I'm not sure if that's actually pronounced that way, but that's what I'm going to keep saying, uh, featuring Sophie Loud. Uh, this track is super bright and full of energy. There is a lot going on in each drop, uh, but not enough that it's overwhelming and chaotic. I really did enjoy the peppiness of the sound design here. And uh, ultimately, though, this uh, isn't really a style I've heard from Lemater in the past, but I do like it. It's not as kind of deep and darker as something like uh, Closer would have been, but um, I do enjoy it. Up next, Space Ghost Coast to Coast by Glass Animals featuring Brie Runway. I really do like how Glass Animals took a darker approach to their production style on this track. Everything before has been, uh, or in their whole discography really, has been bright and light. And uh, it's a good shift in tonality to something that's a little darker. And so I really did like that. Um, it worked great with the vocals of Brie Runway too. I haven't heard anything from hers before, but I did like it. Uh, and the light, tra the light trap beat is, uh, I mean, fairly basic and overdone, but it wasn't really distracting for me. Up next... East Bridge by Hex Cougar, Pauline Her, So Sus, and Sejo. Uh, wow, that is a lot of artists on this track. It doesn't appear like any are a feature. It seems like they all have some production aspects to this track, so just wow. Uh, the sound design is smooth and keeps the same dark tonality throughout. It's got a strong trap beat that kicks into high gear when it comes to the drop, and I think it's actually one of my favorite Hex Cougar tracks to date. So, that was East Bridge. Moving on, we've got Pick Your Battles, the VIP mix, originally by Petite Biscuit and Diplo, so this would just be the remix of his own song of just Petite Biscuit's new take on his original track. And, um, wow, when it comes to Petite Biscuit going back and redoing his old stuff, I really like his VIP mixes. Uh, this one was really good. It has a kind of mysterious, almost time-sensitive atmosphere to it that is really engaging. It fits great with the kind of music I generally listen to, and one of my favorite playlist I have on my own. And um, yeah, Petite Biscuit always kills it with the vocal chops too, and so I'm just, uh, I'm a fan of this track. Uh, moving up next, we've got Beast by Company and Teddy Killers. The two team up for an absolute banger of a drum and bass track with meaty bass lines and catchy lyrics. If you love that kind of heavy drum and bass style of music, you will love this song. Up next, It's Okay by Karma Fields. And uh, Karma Fields always brings this kind of classic experimental side of EDM to the table with each track. And this song actually reminds me a lot of the early days of electronic music, where it wasn't actually EDM, it was just electronic music. They did a kind of, uh, it's like a really darker or just low pitched down processed vocal. And uh, the it's okay every time going out throughout this song, all the lyrics, that's pretty much the only thing. Uh, it sounds a lot like early electronic music to me, and I like the influence there, and uh, I'm a fan of this track. Uh, it doesn't really have a giant punch to it. It's not like as crazy or big and uh, grandioso as some of the stuff from New Age, Dark Age, uh, but it does produce, uh, he does produce a very dynamic track here. 
Uh, up next, we've got TGIF by K-Flay featuring Tom Morello. And uh, wow, K-Flay teams up with the absolutely legendary guitarist Tom Morello for a pretty powerful pseudo-rock ballad. It, uh, should not be it should not have taken me this long to realize that K-Flay uh, would do super well on a rock-esque style track with a heavy guitar uh, lead. And I mean, like, her voice is perfect for it. And so this song was great. This may, it seems like it's the second song of an upcoming album or EP. My guess is it's an album. I actually don't know if she's released anything beforehand that says so. But uh, yeah, I really like this one. It's not normally my cup of tea, but I thought it was great. Up next, we've got Taste of You by Rez featuring Dove Cameron. The seemingly long-awaited collaboration between Dove Cameron and Rez is here, and oh my, is this thing a ton of fun. I feel like Rez dialed back on the grittiness of her normal production to give room for Dove Cameron to really shine in her vocal performances here. I think if Rez would have gone as heavy and as dark as she normally does, it would have been a really weird up and down, but I think Rez did a great job with production on this track to kind of let the air breathe a little bit and make it almost a little more commercial friendly. It's a little more radio friendly than I think Rez has done before. And so I was a big fan of it and I think it was a great balance between the two sounds. Up next, uh, we've got Back to Back by Excision and Uber featuring Armani Rain. Uh, Excision is pretty hit or miss for me. Fun fact, I actually live or live very close to where he grew up. Um, and uh, in terms of heavy producers, I don't really love them all the time. They're Again, they're really hit or miss for me. But uh, boy, does this track absolutely slap. I also normally don't really like anything that sounds anything close to vomit step but that second drop is oh it is just like the perfect amount of it for me and oh i this song instantly went into my hype playlist instantly went into my banger workout playlist and oh big big fan uh up next you've changed i've changed by son holo featuring chet porter and uh this is the sixth and final song or single coming up uh for his long-awaited bbu okay or album two and uh, Son Holo and Chet Porter team up for a pretty poppy, kind of early 2000s uh, rock, pseudo-rock-esque track. Uh, this is probably the poppiest uh, thing from either Chet Porter or Son Holo to date in terms of their discography, and I think it works really well. I'm a fan of this track. I did a reaction to it earlier, and so you can go watch that on my channel if you want to. But um, yeah, I did enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, two more! Our final two tracks. Uh, number two, uh, More to Give by Drinks on Me. Uh, although it's a short, only two and a half minute track, uh, it's a really good garage song that I just, I just instantly gravitated towards. It's got a punchy beat and clean vocals and was a instant classic for me. I really, really enjoyed this. I want to hear more Drinks on Me, especially on Monster Cat. I just, there's just something about when, yeah, I just didn't love his stuff beforehand. I thought it was good, but as soon as he came on Monster Cat, his two songs, Hit List and this one, I thought were miles ahead of anything else in his discography. So just make more of those types of songs for me, <laughs> please. Uh, and finally, my favorite song of the week is Memory Bank by Dairo and Conroe. I also did a react to this, so you can go see that on my channel for the initial thoughts on this track, but... I thought this was a super funky track with a powerhouse of a discorded, distorted guitar. Dairo and Conyo, wow, my words here. Dairo and Conro work really great together, and the whole thing just sounds like a Lemator track. And ultimately, I was just wishing I wanted more. I was just, that didn't, that, wow, my words here do not make sense. I wanted more from this track. I wanted more. I want more Dairo and Conro together. I want more style of this track. Ah, my words do much, but that was it uh, for this week in EDM. If you guys want to, uh, yeah, add in the comment section below any other artists you'd like me to track. I'm not going to go back and listen to older songs, but if you're like, hey, this person is one of my favorite artists, tell me in the comment section below. I will follow them on Spotify so that I can put them into lists here. I'm going to try to stay to EDM as much as I can. But let me know if you liked this video, this style. It's a little different than anything else I've done before. I'm still trying to work out all the kinks and stuff. But yeah, I've been Bowtie Media, and I will see you guys in another video.